Hello and welcome to Handmade Originals. I'm in London, we're in lockdown, but I am outside. So, like many people, um, during lockdown I've been doing clearing out and chucking out. But in the garden I found this piece of guttering. And this was left over from building work last year. The problem is I don't really like chucking things out. So hold that thought. Like many people, after the food shortages in the shops in March this year, um, I also started toying with the idea of building work at the back. I also started <laughs> toying with the idea of growing my own food. So put those two ideas together, not wanting to throw things out and growing one's own food, I thought, light bulb moment, I'm going to use this guttering for growing some salad leaves. And amazingly, when I was sorting out my cupboards, look what I found, a packet of lettuce seeds. Perfect, I thought, until I turned them over and I discovered, I don't know if you can read it here, but these seeds were harvested in 1995 to be sown by 1997. So unfortunately, I'm just 23 years too late to sow these. And even my mother, who is a very keen gardener, dismissed them as not worthy of even trying to plant. So they go in the bin. But step forward instead, a pot of lovely basil from my local supermarket, which as you can see, this is absolutely full of little basil plants, which I'm going to separate and spread out, which I think will probably fill the entire gutter. The other good thing about the basil plant is that like the salad leaves, I will be always cutting them to use them in cooking um, so that they will never grow too big and overload the guttering and make it fall down because it's too heavy. Right, so let's put this guttering together. Guttering is a bit like Lego, it's, it's really easy and quite good fun actually. It comes in all shapes and sizes. On the end of each piece of guttering you'll want what's called a stop end. That's a stop end. Um, there are two different types, there's internal and external. An internal one sits kind of inside the guttering like that and the external one which is what this is comes with a clip which is this um, which I think is stronger and more watertight if you're using it for water so this is the one I've gone for and actually this is the one which is much more frequently used I think the easiest way to put it together is put the rubber inside first although frankly if you're filling it with soil you don't really need the rubber but let's just do it then you put the clip on so that it's almost on, just, you can see it's sitting proud of it both sides like that. And then you can, if you squeeze the guttering, you can place it inside like that. Hold it firmly down and then push and push. And then it is securely held on the end. And now we can fill it with soil. Guttering comes in all shapes and sizes, and here is an alternative profile for a stop end. Um, this one is actually slightly deeper than the one which my builders left behind, and if I was doing this again and ordering some fresh guttering, I would probably get this guttering, which is, gives the roots a bit more room. This is called um, deep flow guttering or high flow. It's exactly the same inside with exactly the same sort of clip thing here. And that's just the external stop end. Before I fill this with soil I'm just going to put some drainage holes in because much as basil really likes a lot of water nobody wants a soggy bottom. So I'm going to put this piece of wood underneath not because I think it will crack when I drill it but just to make sure that it doesn't. Um, I'm doing this in June so it's nice and warm this plastic but if it was cold in winter and you were doing this Plastic gets much more brittle in the cold, so this is probably a good idea to put under in any event, just to be on the safe side. This is a bit, drill bit for wood, and it's a size five. And I think that's probably about the right size. I'm just taking a guess on that, so that there's water draining, but it stays moist. Right, I'm now going to show you 
how this clips onto the brackets which are already fixed onto the fence. I'm going to show it to you while it's empty so that it's easier for me to manipulate it and it's easier for you to see because there's nothing in it. Right, I've put two of these brackets um, which cut, are cut to the shape of the profile of the guttering in the fence and I've put brass screws in here because brass doesn't rust. So I'm just going to show you how this clips in. So this is how you fit the guttering in. You push it so that it's under that back lip. You pull the bracket at the front and it literally just snaps into position. And then if you want to move it one way or the other, you can push it along backwards and forwards like that. Now I'm going to take this out so that I can fill it with soil. And the next time you see it, it will be loaded with soil, filled with basil and looking lovely. And finally, here it is, my gutter garden, finished. All planted, my basil. It's a bit falling over at the moment, but only because I've just planted it, it will perk up in a couple of hours. Um, and there we have it for anyone who wants to grow anything you don't need a garden you just need a fence or you could even put it on a wall i guess um if i was doing this again and if my salad leaf seeds ever arrive i would buy the new deep flow guttering which has more room for the roots it comes in three and four meter lengths so i would run it from fence post to fence post so that, and I understand that slugs and snails are a problem with lettuce, um, the actual guttering itself would be forward from the fence so the only access for slugs and snails would be at either end which I could monitor quite carefully and therefore hopefully protect my new salad leaves. Anyway, here we are, this is it, this is the fence garden. Um, if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and try it yourself.